This week on Jambar TV, we'll discuss a new university policy on Gmail and Google Drive. Then, we'll talk about the history of Valentine's Day. We'll also dribble up a conversation about women's basketball and their recent win. Hello and welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Scott Chittock. And I'm Matt Sautler. There have been a number of concerns raised over the progress of the new student center. Jambar reporter Matt Sautler has more. For the faculty, no. With the arrival of President Bill Johnson, numerous donors have retracted their funding from Youngstown State. This includes Bruce Zolden, CEO and founder of Phantom Fireworks. He had previously planned on donating $5 million to the university to help renovate Kilcally Center. This community provided me, and the university helped a lot in my career too, and I can get into that, but helped me to start a business out of the trunk of my mother's car to build it to, as I said, a national company. I want to give back to the community. And I was a student walking the campus in my young days. Zolden pulled his funding on February 1st. According to Associate Vice President of Student Experience, Joy Pukabla Byers, construction will continue in 2025. The plan has not changed. We're still sticking with the same timeline, so the facility is still planned to go under construction of May of 2025. Um, 2025, and then hopefully having the facility up and operational of fall of 2027. It's roughly a little under a 2.5 year project. Changes to the center will include expanding the Chestnut Room, condensing restaurants in Kilcally into one area, and making the center more open to natural light. Beginning fall 2024, students, faculty, and staff will no longer be able to access Gmail or Google Drive on university-owned devices. Other Google products will be accessible, but those who want to use Gmail and Google Drive will have to use their personal devices. Associate Vice President and Chief Information Officer Jim Yukich said the purpose of the policy is to limit cybersecurity attacks with having little impact on campus. We've seen a dramatic increase in cybersecurity attacks over the past uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, and so we're always looking at ways to improve our security posture without dramatically affecting you know, the educational process. Those who borrow laptops from the university will be excluded from the new policy. Faculty and staff will be able to apply for an exemption, but UCatch said university work should be conducted on Microsoft products. He encourages those who want an exemption to reach out to Director of IT Training Services, Rosalind Donaldson, for help with Office 365 and OneDrive. A conference coming to YSU offers a new way to look at historical events, some with a science fiction twist. YSU Associate Professor of History Studies, Amy Fluker, discussed what community members could expect at this year's History Across the Humanities Conference. This year we're doing something slightly different by picking a particular theme, which is basically science fiction. Um, we are partnering with um, the English and World Languages Department this year, as well as with the Trumbull County Historical Society to highlight this theme of science fiction. The conference takes place at the Youngstown Historical Center of Industry and Labor, February 22nd to February 24th. The Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships announced in an email on February 5th that YSU will not receive FAFSA application results until the first half of March. According to the email, the Department of Education has delayed its distribution of FAFSA results to make inflation adjustments to its student aid index. Once the university has received the results, students will be able to complete YSU's need-based housing grant application. Students will receive financial aid offers after the results are processed. Scott, you got any plans for Valentine's Day? Uh, no, I can't say that I do. Me neither, but at least if I'm alone, I won't be cold. Let's check in with Zonde for the weather. We are going to have some rainy days moving into this weekend. I'll have a more detailed report after the break.
We know you hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Why go to a school in the Mahoning Valley of Northeastern Ohio, surprisingly beautiful as that may be? Why live on a campus that sits on the edge of the Rust Belt, historic and inspiring as that may be? In short, why choose Youngstown State? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the future, we take a back seat to nobody because you can afford us and we will afford you the opportunity to build the future you want and the life you desire. Why Youngstown State? Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together. Youngstown State University. Now you know why. All right, so who knows why? I know why. For starters, I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. Can you say that? Engineering, sports, music, business, I can do anything here. I'm getting my hands dirty learning what my friends are only reading about. I'm part of something bigger here. I'm proud to bleed red and black. So yeah, I know why. It's not a question, it's the answer. Youngstown State University, know why. Why Youngstown State University? Because when it comes to the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Youngstown State University. Now you know why. Why Youngstown State University? Because I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. I can do anything here. I know why. It's not a question. It's the answer. Youngstown State University. Know why. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Zonde Smith and this is your weekly weather outlook. Today we will see temps at 60 degrees and there will be heavy cloud coverage. There will be an 80% chance for rain throughout the day and night. There will be clear skies and that chance for rain will reduce to 11%. Tomorrow will be cloudy with 54 degree temps and an 83% chance for rain. At night, that chance for rain will reduce to 16% and temps will drop to 31 degrees. We are going to finish out the weekend strong with a partly cloudy day and 40 de 45 degrees with a very low chance for rain. Temps will drop to 28 degrees and that chance for rain will stay consistent moving into the night. Now, let's take a look at my four-day forecast. Today will be cloudy with a high of 60 degrees and an 80% chance for rain. At night, the temps will drop to 48 with a very low chance for rain. Tomorrow, temps will reach 54 degrees and it will be mostly cloudy with an 83% chance for rain. At night, we'll have a low of 31 degrees and the chance for rain will reduce to 16%. On Sunday, we'll see a high of 45 degrees with some sun making an appearance throughout the day. Sunday night, we'll see a temps at 28 degrees with a low chance for rain once again. At the start of the week, temps will be around 43 degrees. We'll see a very low chance for rain throughout the day as well. This will change moving into the evening. There is a 35% chance of precipitation at night and temps will be at 31 degrees. That's all we have for this week's weather outlook, but stick around as Caleb Ellison will be filling us in on the origin of Valentine's Day. Why Youngstown State University? Because when it comes to the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Youngstown State University. Now you know why. Why Youngstown State University? Because I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. I can do anything here. I know why. It's not a question. It's the answer. Youngstown State University. Know why. We know you hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Why go to a school in the Mahoning Valley of Northeastern Ohio, surprisingly beautiful as that may be? Why live on a campus that sits on the edge of the Rust Belt, historic and inspiring as that may be? In short, why choose Youngstown State? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the future, 
we take a back seat to nobody because you can afford us and we will afford you the opportunity to build the future you want and the life you desire. Why Youngstown State? Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together. Youngstown State University. Now you know why. All right, so who knows why? I know why. For starters, I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. Can you say that? Engineering, sports, music, business, I can do anything here. I'm getting my hands dirty learning what my friends are only reading about. I'm part of something bigger here. I'm proud to bleed red and black. So yeah, I know why. It's not a question, it's the answer. Youngstown State University, know why. Welcome back to Jambar TV, I'm Caleb Ellison. Greek life at YSU gives students a great opportunity to get involved on campus and make a difference. Within the chapters, there are tons of leadership positions, philanthropy events, and ways to thrive on campus. Greek life strives to make students feel accepted in their groups. To join a fraternity or sorority, applicants must be full-time students in good standing within the university and meet the group's academic standards. Anyone interested in joining can attend the recruitment events at the beginning of each semester or reach out to the chapters during continuous open bidding. To find out what chapters are recruiting, reach out to them directly. Valentine's Day, a holiday rooted in Christian and ancient Roman traditions, is celebrated all over the world despite its Western origins. International student Priyanka Silwal says everyone in her home country celebrates Valentine's Day. Another Nepali student, Ankit Karga, said he'll still send gifts to his girlfriend in Nepal despite the distance. In the spring semester of 2023, the International Programs Office gave students Valentine's Day cards to give to each other at an international coffee hour. The IPO aims to be inclusive to international students and help immerse them into the university's community. It's Black History Month, and to celebrate, the Butler Institute of American Art is showcasing lesser-known African-American artists. Giving us a tour is Christopher Gillette. About Greatness Revealed, the Art of African Americans, showcases 31 artists, such as Charles Soleil, the first African American graduate from the Cleveland Institute of Art. Other pieces in the exhibition include Astronaut by Lily Hardgrove, Garvey's Ghost by Richard Yardy, and Albright's Mona Lisa. The exhibition also features Robert Guathway, a white artist who often painted social change and the lives of African Americans. Education director Joyce Mitsevich said the works are a part of the museum's collection. It's also works from our collection from African American artists um, who have not been featured in an exhibit uh, in the museum, but they are works in our collection. Misovich explained the butler has an abundance of works. And the butler has about 22,000 works in our collection. We can never have those all on display at one time. The butler welcomes approximately 100,000 visitors annually. Misovich said museums are a safe space for travelers. Museums are a safe space. You know, when you travel somewhere and you're looking, and let's say you're just, you know, traveling alone or you're attending a conference or a workshop or, you know, whatever, visiting a family member and you're alone, you know, going to a museum offers a space where you could just relax and become engaged in looking at the works of art. The Butler is free and open every day except for Mondays. For Jambar TV, I'm Christopher Gillette. Greatness Revealed runs through March 24th. With over 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, the Cincinnati-based band Coastal Club combines hints of surf rock and indie pop to captivate its fans. Originally called Local Waves, lead singer and guitarist Alex Herlinger changed the name to Coastal Club in 2017 with the addition of bassist Avery Bether and drummer David McGuire. After a three-year musical hiatus, Coastal Club has singles planned for March and follow up with a new EP. Herlinger said that the long wait for the fans will not be consistent following the new musical releases. We've like gone in and out of kind of taking breaks as a band, but we're trying to really gear things up again and, and get things rolling. So after this release, I, I don't think it'll be near as long. Coastal Club will perform near the Mahoning Valley on April 5th at 8 p.m. with Jordan Dean and Liam Brock at the Beachland Ballroom and Tavern in Cleveland. 
University Theatre is preparing for its third show of the 2023-24 season. Here's Editor-in-Chief Molly Burke with more on the play written by a YSU alumna. University Theater will put on It's a Small World or the Robot Play from February 16th through 18th and February 23rd through 25th in the Spotlight Theater of Bliss Hall. The play, written by YSU alumna Amber Palmer, follows the story of an engineer taking a robot back to his creator on a road trip to Disney World. The robot, named Cyrus, is played by Aiden Holderfield, a fifth-year senior and psychology major. Holderfield talked about what he hopes the audience takes away from the play. I think it's very heartwarming, it's very thought-provoking, and for the magical aspect of it, it's also very realistic. I think it is very much how real people are and what real people do in the good and the bad. The play's director, Todd Dickin, said it takes a team and many moving parts to prepare the play for the stage. Of course, you've got, you've got the performers, uh, and then you've, uh, you've got the designers that are involved in this. Uh, you have the crew uh, that are going to be helping run it from stage management to backstage crew, uh, the wardrobe people, uh, the lighting, um, the sound. One of those roles is filled by Katherine Garlick, University Theater's resident costume designer. Garlick talked about the play's costumes and her designs. Most of the characters are people, so there's a lot of clothes going on. Um, but we do have the central character who is a robot. Um, and so there was a lot of trying to figure out how do we make a human look like a robot. Tickets for It's a Small World or the Robot Play can be purchased online or at the box office in Bliss Hall. Tickets are free for students and discounted for faculty and staff. Reporting for the Jam Bar, I'm Molly Burke. That's all I have for your weekly student life update, but stick around because coming up next, Tazaya Howard will be in the studio with sports after the break. All right, so who knows why? I know why. For starters, I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. Can you say that? Engineering, sports, music, business, I can do anything here. I'm getting my hands dirty learning what my friends are only reading about. I'm part of something bigger here. I'm proud to bleed red and black. So yeah, I know why. It's not a question, it's the answer. Youngstown State University, know why. We know you hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Why go to a school in the Mahoning Valley of Northeastern Ohio, surprisingly beautiful as that may be? Why live on a campus that sits on the edge of the Rust Belt, historic and inspiring as that may be? In short, why choose Youngstown State? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the future, we take a back seat to nobody because you can afford us and we will afford you the opportunity to build the future you want and the life you desire. Why Youngstown State? Because we care about you, your success, and our future. Together. Youngstown State University. Now you know why. Why Youngstown State University? Because when it comes to the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Youngstown State University. Now you know why. Why Youngstown State University? Because I'm getting a top tier education without the price tag. I can do anything here. I know why. It's not a question, it's the answer. Youngstown State University. Know why. Welcome back, I'm Tazai Howard. And this is your weekly sports update. In its previous matchup against the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee on January 13th, the YSU women's basketball team lost in a 66-58 effort on the road. On February 3rd, the Penguins bounced back and knocked off the Panthers inside the Beagley Center. The Penguins shot 57% from the field in the second quarter, while also making two three-pointers on two attempts. Despite the high shooting percentages, the Penguins went into the locker room down 35-37 at halftime. 
the break didn't cool off the Penguins as they shot 50% from the field, including 50% from the three-point range in the third quarter. The Penguins' defense held Milwaukee to 31% shooting from the field in the third, while holding the Panthers to 29% shooting from beyond the arc. Senior guard Malia Magestro scored 10 of the team's 22 points in the period, which helped get the Penguins to a 57-54 lead entering the final quarter of play. With 3.20 to go in the fourth, Milwaukee tied the score at 66 with a layup, but the Penguins forced misses for the rest of the contest and prevailed in a 73-66 win. Magestro finished with the game's leading scorer 23 points while also tallying two steals. She's now, she's now averaging 19 points per game over the last three contests. Magestro was one of four Penguins to finish a double-digit point game as junior guard Haley Theory had 13 points and fifth years Emily Saunders and Shaylee Kirby each scored 10. The senior guard commented after the game, crediting the defensive adjustments that the Penguins made, helping them secure the victory. I think today, you know, we, we kind of kept their leading scores for the last time we played them, you know, to, to low points. We didn't let, you know, number 23 score, which she killed us last game. Um, and, you know, we really knew our scout this, this time around. So I think that really showed. Fifth year Dana Gerald's scored her 1,000th point in the matchup with seven against the Panthers. The Penguins will return to the court at 7 p.m. on February 8th in Rochester, Michigan, with a matchup against the, Gold, the Oakland University Golden Grizzlies. To watch the game live, go to ESPN Plus or listen to the matchup at 1390 WNIO. After a short fall season and winter training, the Youngstown State University softball team will officially kick off its 2024 season on February 9th. The Gwins, travel, the Gwins will travel to Boiling Springs, North Carolina to compete in their first five games of the season in a tournament hosted by Gardner-Webb University. Head coach Brian Gamble said, that the, said fans can expect to see a difference and quicker pace of the style of play compared to last season. Uh, this year we're, you know, we have a lot more speed. Uh, you know, we've been able to, to do a lot more um, you know, stealing, base running and, and, and different things and taking extra bases. And After a string of tournaments down south, the Penguins will return home on March 12th to host Akron University in their home opener. The Youngstown State University men's basketball team went on the road to play Wright State University on February 1st and Purdue University, Fort Wayne, on February 4th. The Penguins defeated the Raiders 88-77 to improve to 17-6 overall and 9-3 in the Horizon League. Five Penguins posted double figures. Fifth year DJ Burns recorded his 13th double-double of the season with 17 points and 12 rebounds. Senior Bryson Lagden tied a career-high five three-pointers and posted 17 points. Fifth year Ziggy Reed and Brett Thompson recorded 14 points. Fifth year Brandon Rush added 10 points of his own. The Penguins were defeated by Purdue Fort Wayne 82-78. The loss is their first in four games for the Penguins as they fall to 17-7 overall and 9-4 in the Horizon League play. Burns posted his 14th double-double of the season with 15 points and a career-high 17 rebounds. The fifth year now ranks fourth in double-doubles in, double in the NCAA as games played through February 5th. Junior EJ Farmer posted a team-high 19 points. In the second half, the Macedons opened up the scoring and the Penguins were unable to score. For head coach Jared Calhoun, the Macedon's ability to score was due to a lack of Penguins offense. But it's not just all our defense, right? We had some timely turnovers. Uh, I think we had 13 turnovers. They scored 20 points off of our turnovers. So, you know, to me, the best defense is a good offense, right? And you score the ball, you can set your defense up. We had some live ball turnovers, some uncharacteristic things. The Penguins will return home to the Beagley Center to begin a three-game homestand. On February 8th, YSU will play the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Tip-off is set for 6.30 p.m. The Youngstown State University men's and women's track and field teams hosted the YSU Mid-Major Invitational, hosted by Southwood's help from February 2nd to 3rd. Day one of the Invitational featured a solid performance on the women's side with victories in the pole vault, long jump, and weight throw while the men's recorded wins in the long jump and distance medley, while senior Ty Hunt set a new meet record with a leap of 7.71 meters. The final day of the Invitational saw both the men's and women's squads combine for a total of 10 event victories. 
Youngstown State returns to action as the squads will split up from February 9th to 10th for the David Henry Valentine Invitational hosted by Boston University Tyson Invitational at the Spire Indoor Collegiate Games. The YSU men's tennis team hit the road for the first time in the season. The Penguins played two games in Nebraska facing off against Creighton and Omaha on February 2nd and 3rd. Creighton handed YSU their first loss this season by a score of 5-2 in their matches. The Penguins looked to bounce back following the day against Omaha, but were defeated 4-2 in the matches. Junior Harry Fuzas spoke about the matches and the competition they faced. There were some great uh, matches and great opportunity for us, especially the guys that play lower in the lineup to have some really, to play against some really tough opponents, you know, to get some good matches in. Uh, it was really unfortunate that we couldn't have our best players, our number one and our number three on those two matches. But the other guys, we did our best. Team moves to three and two on the season with eight non-conference games remaining on the schedule. The tennis team will round out their road trip with a weekend with this matchup against William & Mary on February 9th. Then they will travel to North on February 10th, taking on the Naval Academy. To view live stats on the matches, go to YSUsports.com. Now we are going to toss it over to Zande for a quick weather recap. At the start of the weekend, we will see heavy cloud cover and an 80% chance for rain. This weather will continue throughout the weekend. At the start of the week, we will see less rain, but tips will be around 40 degrees on Monday. That's all we have for Jampar DV this weekend. Stay safe, Penguins. Well, so Valentine's Day is coming up. Do you guys have any plans? I'll be alone. <laughs> we know that much. I'll be alone by myself, but people around me as I'll get a nice little lift in. I will also be alone, but you know, there's always ice cream and uh, friends. So and movies. Works Don't forget well. the movies. movies. And hopefully it won't be cold. Hopefully not. Support for Jambar TV is provided in part by the YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Lamb Charitable Foundation. Thank you. <laughs> 